Now, I forgot to start recording. So what I want you to do is you guys need to keep me honest. If you don't see a little red dot, top left. <laughs> top left. <laughs> um, I'm, it's not recording. Okay. I'm going to repeat that stuff a little bit, and then we'll get into it. Now, the recordings are going to be on Canvas and modules. You go to unit module unit one and you'll see the recording there. I have the title, I'll go unit one, but when it'll be video space, unit one, significant figures, eight, 20, five, 23. So date, and I put them all on YouTube. The way I do it is in Zoom, when you record, um, and when you end the session, it creates an MP4 file. Then I have to transfer the MP4, and that takes like half an hour, 45 minutes, hanging out along my lectures. Then I have to transfer that up to YouTube, my YouTube, and that takes, depending on my bandwidth, I have 450 megabits down and eight up. So when I move big files up, it takes forever. So then it goes to Canvas page, because I have a link now. And then from Canvas page, I go to modules. That's the steps I have to do each time I upload a video. But the good news is you get to take advantage of it. You, you may also peruse on YouTube, all my videos. I've got probably 70 or 80 of them on various topics. And you feel free to roam around in there. Okay, so let me. So, as I was saying before, Significant figures is a way of determining the precision of the number. So the first thing we need to do, step number one, is to figure out how many significant figures are in the number. Secondly, we need to figure out what we're going to do with that number. If we're adding them or subtracting them, multiplying, dividing, or doing exponentiation. Um, and there are two basic rules for that, too. It's not too bad. Um, now, let me give a, a, a metaphor on this precision though. If we have a chain, chain is made up of links, and each link is, is uh, rated on how strong it is. So if we have 10 links on the floor, all attached together, and nine of them can hold 100 pounds, and one of them can hold 10 pounds, how much can I lift for that chain? Huh? You said 10. Yeah, 10. Because we go to 11 pounds, the 100 pounders are fine with 11 pounds, but that 10 pounder is going to break. And that's the same thing with precision in numbers. We're always going to be working with the least precise number because that determines everything. Okay, so first of all, we, let's come up with some rules. Um, all right, as a class, my lecture is hard to get people to see that. Every professor I talk to has the same challenge. Getting your students to speak up. Good. I have a, I have a shill. <laughs> All right. So just now, you didn't know anything about submitting figures unless we started this class before we came. Other than that, our head is in high school, possibly. All right. So let's just go down here and let's see if we can come up with some. Numbers for significant figures, and then we can come up with some rules afterwards. And I'll tell you what this writer is. Okay, first one here one, two, three. How many significant figures do you have? Three, or two. Okay, it's three. Okay, one point two three. There's one. Right, one, three, two, okay, it's three. By the way, earlier I said I was old, remember? When you're talking to your grandfather, do you talk like this? No, don't talk. <laughs> you talk really loudly. That's if you're in the back. Now, if I answer your question, and it's a funny answer, probably because I didn't hear your question. So, Speak up, including loud. I'm just near you. Speak up. Some people are really shy. I mean, 
I'm looking at the floor, we're talking like this. <laughs> okay, um, 0 0.23. Two. Good. How about 1.01? 1 .01? See, we already got the idea here. 5 0. This is 1. Very good. How about 5 0 decimal point? Two. Two. All right. How about point zero 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 three five? Four two two. Okay. We're gonna go over that. The issues are zeros. <laughs> issues are zero. And it depends on where the zeros are. <laughs> One point zero zero three five. Zero point one zero zero three five. One point two times ten squared. We have three, we have two, three. Um, 0 0.00350 3 Great, good Okay um, That 1.23 times 10 squared is the scientific notation version of the number The first number has to be a number from 1 to 9.99 and then there should be an exponentiation. The exponentiation number doesn't count, only the decimal number from one to nine point. Okay, so we have some anomalies. And it all comes down to zero. Where is the zero located? Beginning, middle, end. All right. If it's at the beginning, it's never significant. No exceptions. If it's in the middle, it's always significant. No exception. Now, the challenging part is at the end. When is it significant at the end? Okay. If there's a decimal point in there, it's significant. No decimal point, not significant. Now, in your in your dry lab today, it's going to be you have. They're going to give an example of like, I think it's 5 0. You know, two answers to that, but in my class, there's only 5 0 means one significant figure. The dry lab will say to be determined, but not able to determine, something like that. Now, that's great if you're in the math department, but in the sciences and engineering, you've got to deal with that number. So they ignore that <laughs> and they say, Trailing zeros, 5 0 with no decimal point has no decimal points. So the zero at the end does not count for this one sig fig. So those are the three rules. Only three. Now there's some rules when we go and manipulate it through multiplication, division, division, subtraction. But as far as determining the actual number itself, zeros. And the scientific notation is a little tricky because you ignore the exponential part. And you're still at the uh, front end decimal. Now that's after you convert it to a number from zero to 9.999. It's like 105, you have to convert it. Okay. Does this make sense? Are you gonna practice this a lot in life? <laughs> So no more, lots of practice. Um, this is what your dry lab is going to look like. Oh, it says ambiguous, what it says. which is not true. Not ambiguous. You can just go here, go through a series of these, and uh, again, you can work in groups. That's fine. Um, and you actually do your wet lab. It's going to depend on the lab whether you work in pairs or single. Normally, it's single.
Okay, a rule for adding and subtracting. When you add or subtract numbers, you have to look at the numbers themselves. And when you add or subtract, what counts is the decimal place in the number, not the total number of six bits. Look at the decimal place, how far out does it go? For example, if we were adding One point oh five plus two. Okay, how many decimal places does the one oh five have? Two. <laughs> how about the two? Zero. So our answer is going to have zero decimal places. So what's the answer? Three. Now, the accountants in the proof here are going to have this. What about that leftover nickel? You know, throw that away? But as far as ma manipulation, adding subtraction, you take the least amount of decimal points. Least amount. Question. Yeah. So 50 has two, six, and then one six base, but five has zero, right? 50 has one six base. Five has zero. And then one six base, one six base, one six base, one six base. As far as any strategy? Yeah. Yes. And again, remember, you don't take the total security figures of the individual numbers, it's just decimal play. Okay, so uh, 1.000 has three, 2.5 has one, so our answer is going to have one. That's our answer. It doesn't matter whether you're adding or subtracting. The subtracting is the most multiplicative inverse of that. You know, the same, same operation. It's like division and multiplication. The multiplicative inverse is the one another, but it's the same operation. Oh, yeah, does that make sense? So, on a physical basis, you said 1.05 plus 2.00 is 2.00. Do you have a fair operating Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mentioned if it's 2.00, does that count as decimal places after the rest of it? Yeah. You have to do that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Why yeah. um, on the first one, it's one Zero five, and then um, five, but on the line is two point five. The answer is five. Right. Yeah. So the first one had no decimal, no. and which is smaller than two. So one is smaller than three. <laughs> and keep that in mind because when we get to multiplication and division, then we're looking at the whole number of six bits. And again, it's the same thing. It's, it's, and we're doing a lot of multiplying and dividing in this part. Now, the math in here is designed, I hate to say this, it's middle school math. It's basically ratio and proportion and scientific notation. Those are the two biggies in this class, math wise. So don't worry about having, oh, I'm, I'm in calculus. Do I have to take calculus for this? Absolutely not. Now, a lot of you may be in a calculus class, which, um, but it's very simple math. The hard part in this class is figuring out. What to do? What do you do with the numbers you have in the problem? That's where the strategy comes. Okay, so let's go on to by the way, you should pick up a calculator. And your calculator should have uh, your calculator should have um
Okay. So I would recommend if you haven't bought your calculator yet, I recommend uh, a TI over a factor unit. Because most example problems online you use a TI and then use Casio. Casio factors are fine, it's just that how to use them is different. Um, if you had me for 1A, I would allow this PI84 as long as you know how to clear, clear memory. A lot of professors will allow this. And also, if you're taking count or anything like that, they won't allow this. That's because you can store stuff in it. And during the test, you can, but if you clear the memory, if you show me you clear the memory, it's on the top. So, so if you haven't bought a calculator yet, I'd recommend this one. This is a TI30X. And um, it, 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 there's a number of TI calculators that are fine. Make sure it's got something, a button that has E, E, on it. E, E. And that has to do with scientific notation. The E, the e stands for engineering, and the engineering use, engineers use the same kind of notation. So the difference in scientific notation, but it's the same thing. So E, E. If you don't have E, E, you gotta use parentheses off the E, E. So by using E, E, you save four steps each time you do a problem. Four steps. Okay, so let's do this problem here. Let me uh, erase. Please. Okay, so this is a multiplication and division problem. So I don't know if you've seen how to do a problem like this in your other classes. But I like to teach how to use a calculator. How do you know how to use a calculator? We left. Okay, to minimize your errors, your input errors, your writing down in, in, intermediate uh, answer and all that stuff, this is the way to do it. You let your calculator do the flipping for you. It's like the yellow page of useless. You let the yellow page do the walking for you. You don't have yellow pages anymore. Are they at yellowpage.com? Oh, I'd be surprised. Yeah. I, I mean, they would, you know, they would live in like Sacramento. Things like this. Yeah. It's a pain to get through. Okay. Um, so here we have a problem with multiplying on the top, dividing on the bottom. Now, whenever you see a fraction on the bottom, there's room with the division problem. So we're dividing the answer up here by 6.581. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go 1.56 times 0.12. Do I need to put the zero in? No, don't put the zero. Just put 0.12. Now, if you're OCD, get the zero times 1.23. Now, so I went 1.56 times 0.6. So times two. And then instead of hitting enter, I hit the divide key. Because we're dividing by that number. Now I hit enter. Okay, this is what my custom calculator gives me. Okay, so you multiply everything on the top, you hit the divide key each time there's a number below. If there are three numbers below, you can hit the divide key for each number. Now, if this had like a you can always tell me where you're multiplying there two times that. No, I'm multiplying one half times one over six point five eight. That's what the calculator sees. Okay, so now we're multiplying and dividing. Now we need to determine the significant figures of each number. So how many six figs does 1.56? Three. 
three. What about point zero point one two? How about one point two three? And how about six point five eight one? Four. Okay, so our answer is going to have how many six bits? Two. So how do you find? I got this big giant number here, right? Underneath the covers in this calculator, there are 29 places it goes out. It doesn't display that many, but it's very accurate underneath the covers. Okay, so for two six, now this is going to be two six bits now. So we go to the third significant figure, which is that. We don't care about anything else. Again, this is the 29 numbers along. We go, we need two six figs, we go to the third place that determines what the zero is going to be. If it's okay, zero to four, we just drop it. If it's five to nine, we increase the second place by one. So this is zero to four, so the answer is what? Six point what? Yeah. How many six figures is that? Three. How many six figures should our answer be? Two. So the answer is six point zero. Um, I think that I, I think it's 6.0 before I got 0. 0.6 before. Yeah, I think it's 6.0 and it's divided by the 6.6. It's 6.5 or 1. Yeah, yeah, and I did that, but I got 0. So I got the same answer and said 0 before it's supposed to be shot. Well. Let me do it on my detector. <laughs> By the way, I have no problems with any of you challenging my answer. For me, it's a win-win. Because you get to make sure you're doing it right. At least doing it right the way you see it. And then uh, I get to give you points. So it's a win-win for me. Okay. Um, I agree with you. So this is a clunky calculator. By the way, if you're going to borrow your friend's calculator and it looks like it's been through the Civil War, pass. So uh, our real answer is that. So now, Since we have Popon and one today. Um, so, what is our answer now? Two six eight. What is it again? Zero point. How many six eight is that? One, two, and two. So, it's going to be four. So, we're going to go to the third place. Which is the nine. Because remember, zeros in front don't count ever. So the nine is the third six bit. So that's five to nine. So you add one. So that kicks that four up to a five. Okay. Are we okay with that? Yeah. I'm confused. Uh, when we calculate, you figure that out. I need so you just need to find two six That's where you lost. You go to your third place. The next place will go. So if it's two six you have to go to the third six place. Your zero don't count in front. So we go one, two, three, that's the nine. And then that determines what the second place is going to be. That's why the nine kicked the four up to a five. All right? Yeah. 
Okay, is everyone okay with this? So we got to practice how to, how to convert numbers to other two things, even though it was the wrong answer. <laughs> yeah, this one has sticky keys. Um, so when you're, if you have an older calculator, that's got um, some sticky dropped into the key. I have three of these at home and I scrounge them from parts. The students will leave calculators don't work from desks and I pick them up. And frequently they had something wrong with the keyboard or they had a battery that was corroded and I can fix all that. So with the sticky keys, you just take the keyboard off and you soak it in what overnight. Blow it off and let it dry with a big paper towel. And usually it works fine. It's got six in all part. But anyway. Okay. Um all right, let's do another. Okay, let's do this one. By the way, the, the application I'm using is called OneNote. It's from Microsoft. And uh, what I used to do, I used, I used to work up in Washington State for 15 years. And uh, there was a colleague of mine up there who uses OneNote. And he used it in this advanced organic chemistry class. But there are only like 14 students in the class. But there is a small group. What you can do is you can actually have you guys, the students, to bring up one note. And as long as you bring it up to Canvas, my one note will be linked to your one note. So as I change it up here, your one note will actually change. And it's really cool. Then you get to take it home and all the notes are being run. So pretty cool. So we're 48 in the class. We have to individually put everyone's email All right. Um, let's look at this problem here. Now, this is a harder problem because it's got the harder. Thank you for your patience. All right, so we've got um, 1.2 times 10 to the 6 divided by 6.2 times 10 to the 23rd. And I know this number extremely well. This is called Avogadro's number. Uh, times um, in the uh, denominator, 5.12 times 10 to the minus 4. Okay, what is that? Okay, so on your calculator, who does not have EE -E on their calculator? Does anyone not have EE? -E? I think I can write it. Okay. All right, everyone's got EE available then. That's really good. Um, all right, so the way we're going to do this is Okay, so, so 1.2 times 10 to the 6 is 1.2, press the EE key 6. The EE key tells the calculator, this is scientific notation, 10 to the 6. Now we have two numbers at the bottom, we have to divide sign. Okay, we're going to go 1.2 EE6, numbers on the bottom, take the divide key, 6.2 EE23, 
another number on the bottom, which is YT again, 5.12 EE, change sign four. So there are two minuses on your calculator. One is subtraction, the other is change sign. They're not the same at all. Change sign, you make the number positive, if it's negative, or if it's negative, you make it positive. So to have a negative four as an exponent, we have to put change sign four. Then press e, or, um, equal. All right, so let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, so that's what my calculator gave me. Now on the test, for example, if you put that as an answer, I would ding one point. It's not proper sight on submitting the figures. Oh, by the way, I don't do multiple choice tests. I only do uh, fill in. There's otherwise you can't do multiple choice tests. You can write it for a while. And sometimes you're sure it's fine that you get something with the calculator. It's not fair to you to do. No, it's a scientific notation. Now, I'm going to show you how to do a long one. There you're going to multiply 10 carat and all that You have a whole bunch of extra pieces there. Extra keystrokes mean that the chances of making an error go up. So that's why using the EEP is crucial. It cuts down the keystroke. Okay. Um, all right. So let's look at sig figs now. Okay. How many sig figs is 1.2 times 10 to the 6? 2. How about 6.2 times 10 to the 23rd? 2. 5.12 times 10 to the minus 4. 3. Our answer is going to have two. Okay, so we go to the third place. That's great. That's five to nine. So that means that kicks that seven up to an eight. So our answer is okay. Um, so we did, we figured out the sig figs for two for the numerator and denominator. And then how did we get to the it's two sig figs? What's small? Two, two, two. Two small. Yes. That's pretty good. Yes. Okay. Remember the change? Yes. <laughs> <It's really good. laughs> so to determine two sig figs for your number that has more than a whole bunch of numbers in it. There's a third significant number, which is going to be the eight. The eight between five and nine, so you kick that seven up, one up, one eight. And then we, we, we go in with the exponentiation. That's the eight, that remains 10 to the minus two. All right. Okay, so um, are there any questions about sig figs? We're going to practice that a lot in lab, very short. Um, in fact, um, the lab starts at 1 30. Now I've got to take all this apart 
and bring it back to storage place and it's being uh, room 106 for your lab. So I'm gonna end a little early today. I'm gonna end like at 110, 150, something like that. Yeah. Um, Depends what section you're in. There's a Saturday section and a Friday section. If you're in the Friday section, labs today, lectures both days though. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. There's an official way and an unofficial way. I would recommend the unofficial way. And the official way is you have to drop your class and then reopen. The other way to do it is just to go to the other one and that's the one we're going to do. <laughs> I mean, for your benefit, you're going to lose money. So, and normally we have, especially if we have dry light, plenty of room. So, um, okay. So, um, okay. So, any quick, more questions about the kids? Again, you can practice that off the mean name uh, later, later today or later tomorrow. Let's get into. Um, Um, we're going to get into something called problem solving. And we're going to use a technique called dimensional analysis. Now, dimensional analysis is kind of like elementary algebra. Um, if I have um, what is that answer? C, why? The A's cancel. So if we have an A in the numerator and an A in the denominator, they cancel. Maybe that's a C. That's all the algebra you need. That's all the algebra you need. Okay, so keep that thought now. Let's look at this problem here. All right, 15 apples, how many dozen of that? Okay, so the Steps for doing all problems in this class from now till May, I guess. Um, no, not from December. Oh. Um, it's in four steps, every single one. Step one is if there's a chemical reaction, you write the balanced chemical equation. Do we have a chemical reaction going in this problem? No. So skip step number one. Step number two, what's given? Now, to determine that, look for the paragraph and find the number. What number is in there? 15. And what does it apply to? Apples. So we're going to put that on the left. Okay. And what are we trying to calculate? Dozen. Dozen goes on the right. So step four is the setup with conversion factors. Now, conversion factors are fractions. So instead of factors, think in your mind, fractions, conversion fractions. We have two fractions for conversion factor. Now, there's another little cutesy problem. What does that equal? One, right? Because five squared is 25. 25 over 25 is one. That's called the, the, um, the union identity in math. Thank you, math. Okay, so for this to equal one, these two have to be equal. They're not equal, this doesn't work. What is 25 over five squared equal to? One, notice that our fraction, it doesn't matter if it's flipped or not, as long as they're equal. 
That's called the inversion. So if we go over here to fraction, we have 12 over one resident. Are those equal? Yes. So these are equal to one. And one resident over 12, are those equal? So those are two conversion factors that have the given and the calculated in. Now, sometimes you won't find conversion factors that have both of them, then it's a multi-step problem. But this one is a one-stepper because we have, we want to calculate dozen and we're given, so we're trying to calculate. And one conversion factor, how handy is that? Now, the trick is, which conversion factor do you use, left or right? Now, I want you to think about A is equal to C over A. So we have A. One to one left. That's right. We're going to use units just like a variable. So we want to have the given cancel. So keep that in mind forever. The given needs to be canceled unit wise. So for the units to cancel out apples, what has to be in the bottom? Apples. Otherwise, it won't cancel. And then we use. Um, So the 12 apples per double. Apples cancel. Gives us what? Dozen. What are we trying to calculate? Dozen. This is called dimensional analysis or unit cancellation. I like unit cancellation because it kind of says what you're asking to do. Okay, so step number one, we have a chemical reaction. No, don't worry about that. Number one, what's given? Look for the number. If you're going to have two units in your problem. One's going to have a number attached to it, the other's going to have no number. The one with a number attached to it is given. The one that doesn't have a number attached to it is what you're trying to calculate. Okay, so when the calculator is on the right, given on the left. And then in the middle, we have a conversion fraction with the right inversion. So our given cancels and just grind it up. So this problem is worth 10 points. This is why I would be multiple choice. If your setup is correct, you will get nine out of 10 points. Have I used your calculator yet? No. So you have to use your calculator to get nine out of 10 points. The setup is the crucial part. That's the chemistry. The one point is when you can use your calculator. As far as important stuff. And by the way, you get that one point, you're going to have to make sure your sub is correct. You also have to make sure your units are correct. And the number is correct. It's a one point. So right, look at our answer here. We have two sig figs here, two sig figs here, one sig fig there. Now we need to add one element. There's two kinds of sig figs. There's measured sig figs, and there are Absolute. Okay. By definition, is an absolute. So, is it twelve point one per dozen? Ever? No, always twelve. By definition. So, it's not really two sig figs; it's infinite. Right? 
But we have a definition. 12 inches to a foot. Four deals with a this is like definition. Now in your lab tonight, um you can have a sheet with conversion factors on it, and the bold face lines are the ones that are at infinite precision. In other words, by definition. One centimeter, uh, one inch is equal to 2.5 four centimeters per cap, by definition. So that means that has infinite precision. Okay, so our answer is going to have how many sig figs? How many? Well, what's smaller, two or infinity? <laughs> I'd ask <laughs> two. Our answer is going to have two. So we got uh, 15 divided by 12. So what is our answer? Hmm? 1.3. And I want you to circle your answer. You have all your intermediate steps. Just the final one I want you to circle, put a box around it some way. I know that's your final one. Now, this is a very simple example of a word problem. Particularly if you didn't know what Apple is for. There we go. So in this class, you're going to learn some new units. For example, the like number of moles, have a number, um, liters, liter, uh, gases, liters, and moles, a lot of unknown stuff that you've probably not heard of before. The bottom line, though, is if you know the conversion factor, you can convert anything to anything. Like Archimedes. Archimedes said you can move the world as long as you have a lever. In this class, as long as you have a conversion factor, you can work through most anything. All right, I'm going to end. It. Are there any questions about this? Okay. Um, I'm going to end this now. I'm going to go into a lot of examples tomorrow.